Salam. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this very special event. And uh, in a, it is a very tragic one. Um, before we start, let's give us just a few minutes to wait for, for the audience to join us. So I will be back here in a few minutes. Please wait here and um, we will see you soon. Just please wait and we will wait for the audience to join us. Thank you. Hello again. Hi. Um, Salam alaikum. Um, welcome. Welcome for this very emotional and very important event. Um, you're joining uh, us live for uh, for the anniversary, the third anniversary of the dis disappeared, um, the disappeared, um, put into camp of Parhat Tursun. 
Um, as you might know or you might not know, he's a very He's one of the brilliant mind, uh, brilliant Uyghur mind. He's a, a writer, poet, he's a teacher, he's a philosopher, he's many things. Um, today we're really trying to remember his work, his life, and also, um, also trying to raise awareness of his disappearance. We, we try to uh, tell the world that it is a great loss um, that we cannot hear from him, we cannot reach out to him, we cannot read read his work. This is um, really um, a very sad, sad anniversary. So today, I'm really honored to be here with my friends, with my colleagues and also brilliant researchers, um, uh, writers that we invited to this panel. Um, we will start with um, Joshua Al Freeman. He is a very great friend of mine. We have been doing great work to, um, um, he has been doing great work to translate Uyghur poetry. And um, uh, I had this really great privilege to work with him to, um, to share Uyghur poetry with wider audience. We also have um, Tahir Hamut Izgil. He's, as you know, he's a filmmaker, he's a writer, he's a very important intellectual who's working, doing a lot of work to uh, make people understand um, Uyghur sufferings and Uyghur uh, culture. We also have um, Yasser Khandan, you all know she is an um, educator. She is the founder of um, a great uh, foundation to help children to learn uh, Uyghur language. And she she is also a brilliant writer. She's also here. You will see her talking about Perhat, Perhat Tursun as well. And we also have the privilege to have Darren Baylor. And he's a, he's a friend. He is a friend of all of us. And he is a great researcher. Um, um, relentlessly working to make Uyghur case, Uyghur crisis um, heard by many, many people in the world. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we will talking about um, Perhat Tursun's life, Perhat Tursun's work today, and also we will share some of his work um, with some of the um, artistic videos. And also uh, we will um, her, we will hear Miesa reciting one of the poems that she wrote for uh, Perhat Tursun, translated by Josh. So I will welcome the first speaker, um, um, Josh Joshua L. Freeman. Um, I will add him on my screen. Ha, hello, Josh. Hi, Mokadas. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm really happy that you're here and then talk about um, Parhat Tursun. Um, please like go myself. ahead and have a... <laughs> um, this is a, a, a, a sad occasion, but uh, I am happy to be here and I'm happy to be able to share with everybody watching um, about Parhat, about his work. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Um, so I'll try to keep it relatively short. Um, and uh, Mukhadas has just asked me to sort of introduce Parhat. Um, so he was born in 1969 in Atush, in the southwest of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Uh, and he began writing poetry as a teenager. Uh, so Perat Tosun then went to college in Beijing, where he studied Uyghur literature. And he later earned a PhD in the same subject. Um, even as a young college student, Perat was really influential among his friends. Uh, he's charismatic. He encouraged other young Uyghur intellectuals in Beijing to learn Chinese fluently in order to read translations of other literatures into Chinese, uh, since relatively little was being translated into Uyghur at the time. And uh, Perat himself was deeply influenced um, by what he was reading in Western modernist literature and philosophy and psychoanalysis. All of that shows up in his writing. Um, returning after college to Urumqi, capital of the Uyghur region, um, Perat took work in the late 1980s as a researcher at the Xinjiang People's Arts Center but he always viewed his real vocation as writing. And it's as a writer that he became famous. Uh, so when I first learned Uyghur and began reading poetry, uh, there were two or three poets I was particularly struck by. One of them was Perat Tursun. Uh, so Perat Tursun's were actually among the first poems that I ever translated. Um, 
The first Uyghur English poetry translation that I ever published actually consisted of two poems by Perat. One of them is Morning Feeling, and one of them is Elegy, Qasida. Uh, you'll hear both of them today. Uh, so Perat Tursun's poetry is groundbreaking. Uh, emphasis on the breaking. Uh, he delights in challenging convention in all forms. Conventions of style, uh, conventions of form, social conventions of what one should write about and what one shouldn't. Um, his poetry is also beautiful and powerful and moving. Uh, listen carefully to Elegy when you hear it today. Few poems better capture the individual battered by history, but refusing to give in to it. But it's not for his poetry that Perat Tursun is best known in Uyghur society. It's for his equally iconoclastic fiction, and most notably his controversial novel, The Art of Suicide. Um, you'll be hearing more from other panelists today about Perat's uh, fictional work, his novels, and so on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Perat as a person, uh, because he's someone I know very well, and I want to share that with you. So when I first read Perat's work, uh, when I was living in Arumchi, um, I learned that Perat Tosun actually lived in the same city. So through a friend, I got in touch with him. It was around 2007. Over the next 10 years, I got to know Perat very well. Um, for years, we and other friends met regularly for Ultrushla. Uh, which is dinner with drinks, usually a lot of drinks. Um, I count Perat as one of the people who's influenced me, who've, who has influenced me most in my adult life. Uh, as brilliant as he is a writer, I would actually say that Perat is even more brilliant as a conversationalist. Uh, he combines an incredibly broad range of knowledge of many subjects with an absolutely wicked sense of humor. Um, he offers flashes of wisdom, and flashes of absurdity in approximately equal measure, I would say. I remember um, one time I was upset about something and I called Perat up to ask his advice. And he said, look, don't try to understand why that person did that. People do crazy shit. There's no way we can figure it all out. Instead, look at this as dark comedy. The world is full of humor if you know where to look for it. And that makes the intolerable tolerable. I never forgot that piece of advice. Perot fears nothing. That's part of what makes him such a unique and endlessly experimental author. When I think of Perot, I often think of him smoking cheap mohorka tobacco. He would roll up in newspaper, uh, watching horror movies or French comedies. Uh, he is as unpretentious in his tastes as in everything else. He would often make friends with people half his age, um, he never carried himself as a famous person, which he was, a famous person, and is. In a word, Perat is an original. I've never met anyone like him. I count myself lucky to know him. In 2017, as the Chinese government began herding Uyghurs into internment camps by the thousand, most, be most communications were cut off between the Uyghur region and the rest of the world. I lost touch with everyone I knew there. By late 2017 and early 2018, as the number of Uyghurs in the camps climbed past a million, it became clear that Uyghur intellectuals were particular targets. Given his position as an outspoken Uyghur intellectual, I worried deeply about Perat. I was right to worry. In late January 2018, I received word from friends in the Uyghur diaspora that Perat had been arrested and sent to a camp. We never learned what camp. In early 2020, we received news that Perat had been sentenced to more than a dozen years in prison. We never learned what prison he's in. We don't know what the supposed charges are. We don't know what state his health is in. We have heard absolutely nothing. It has been three years today. I think about him every day. What I would ask of everyone listening is, raise awareness of the crisis in the Uyghur region in every way you can. Tell your friends, write your newspaper, use social media, write your representatives, write the Chinese embassy. If Perat were here, he would speak out far more eloquently than I can on this subject. But since he cannot be here, we must all speak out as clearly as possible. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Josh. And I see that now uh, some people are tuned in. Um, I invite every one of you who are watching us to ask questions, comments, and some people are thanking us for organizing this event, and some people are saying that um, they were also friends of Perhat Tursun. So we all remembering him today, and we are all um, wishing and screaming that he will be free soon. So. I will, we decided to share some of Parhat's work. So there's a there's one uh, creative work that um, I created with Lisa Ross um, when we were organizing uh, um, I Can't Sleep um, um, exhibition in New York in 2019. So this is a live performance that we created. So we would like to share with you. When we come back, please ask questions, share your thoughts. And also, I will invite all the panelists to be uh, shown on the on screen when we come back. So see you in a in a bit. And this work that we were sh showing is the poem of uh, Perhat Tursun, Qasida, Elegy. Sorry, it's not working ex exactly as as planned. Uh, sorry, I will do it again. Okay. Because it's live, it's sometimes a little bit complicated. Sorry, I will do it again. Sorry, um, technical problems. Um, um, um, our technical crew is trying to put the video. We will try. If that doesn't work, I will share with you a link on YouTube that you can go and check it by yourself when the panel is over. Can the tech please have a look? If that works. Okay, let's move forward. I will sh I will share with you the the link, so you can go and have a look on this video. Or if we get got to work make it working, we can come back to see it. So I will um, invite Tahir Hamut Isgil. Tahir ka uh, I, will, uh, I will I will invite um back Josh 
I'll invite Miesser. I will invite back Zaren. So yes. Um, so our next panelist is Tahir Hamut Izgil, and he will broadly talk about uh, the disappearance of Uyghur intellectuals and especially Parhat Tursun. Parhat, um, and um, he will be speaking in Uyghur, so we will try to provide a um, quick translation with Josh. Tahir, kasız ki merhamet. Hamallah, salam. Bugün ki muşu faaliyet ki muş katlaşkan sözlükçilerge ve katlaşıp bizden bugün ki muş faaliyetimizini para tursunla hatırlaştın kıgan muşu faaliyetimizini kürüvatkan, anlavatkan hem de dostlarla köptüm köp rahmet. Hello everybody. Thank you both to the other panelists and to everybody watching this event uh, that we are putting on in order to speak out on behalf of para tursun. Uh, Parat bizden ait kaderlik bir dostumuz e, idi. E, ben Parat'ın ki, e, ben bilen boğan biz Parat ilişkimizden dostluk doğduluk azraq e, bir e, şençi bəgənliği kiyen andın Parat'ın tutuluş yeryanı ve bu yeryandaki ben de ilgiligen bazı uçurlar hakkı da e, söz deyim. Parat is a very dear friend of mine um, and after I speak a little bit about our friendship um, I will explain about uh, Parat's disappearance and about the circumstances surrounding it. Uh, in 1987, um, I went to Beijing to study at the Central Nationalities Institute, and I heard that there was um, a student, a writer, uh, named Parat Tursun, two years ahead of us. Um, so with some friends, I went to meet him. Uh, uh, so me and some other new students uh, went to his dorm room to see him and we told him that we heard that you're a writer, um, we're excited to meet you and um, what really remains, or what really um, kind of uh, struck me was that he was his rather nonchalant response, which was basically, oh, uh, nice, something like that. So um, I went back to my dorm room, kind of annoyed, uh, thinking, uh, what a rude guy. And um, the next day, though, he came looking for me and he said, come on, Tyre, let's go to the library. Um, and uh, so we went off to the library together. Uh, so we read many books together. He recommended a lot of books to me, um, particularly Western literature, um, philosophy, uh, other topics. Uh, at that point in Uyghur literature, um, there was very little awareness of um, Western literature, um, you know, the sort of philosophy that influenced Western modernist literature, things like that. Uh, it was uh, only beginning, really, at that time. 
Məsələn, Azad Sultan, Qatarlıq bir türküm ədibiyyat tətqatçıları qərib modernizm ədibiyyatını tunuşduğan. Amma bu tunuşduruş bütünləy burjaziya ədibiyyatını tənqit qılış nöqtüsüdən sosializmlıq meydanda turub tunuşduruş boğan. Azraqla? So, a number of older literary critics had introduced Western modernist literature a little bit in Uyghur, but only from a sort of a negative standpoint of this is uh, bourgeois literature. Uh, that was essentially the extent of it. Uh, so Parat recommended these books to me. Um, we talked about them a lot and in a way, he became for me both mentor and friend. Uh, while we were studying at the Central Nationalities Institute, um, we were both Pikirdash and Sirdash friends. So these are words in Uyghur which don't really have exact English analogs, but basically we were um, people who shared our thoughts and we shared our secrets. Uh, uh, ours is a friendship that has uh, stretched for 30 years. Um, at the most difficult times in my life, um, uh, such as when I was in prison, uh, Parat supported me however he could. Um, at the most um, joyous times in my life, uh, like when I got married, uh, Parat was right there by my side. Um, most important moments, um, things like when I published my first book, uh, Parat uh, uh, helped uh, financially, and uh, you know, he's he's been there for me for three decades. Parat, niki Uyghur adibiyatı da tutkal orne na ki özgüce. Parat has a very unique place in Uyghur literature. Çünkü onun ki özgü xas bir xil alaylı ki, özgü xas bir xil kimbeti Uyghur adibiyatı niki umumi asasi iqimi bilen uh, because his literary creativity um, has developed in a way which is entirely different from the mainstream of Uyghur literature. Uh, um, for this reason, Parat's uh, works, um, his ideas, and his very character have been the um, subject of much debate within Uyghur literature. Um, as we all know, um, uh, serious and um, uh, dangerous changes began in the um, situation in the Uyghur homeland beginning in 2012. <coughs> Uh, so this included um, a reevaluation of basically all Uyghur publications from the 1980s uh, to the present um, for any signs of supposed uh, ethnic splitism um, or opposition to socialism or other ideas that the government didn't like. 
Ben bu şimdilerde biz paratlam bu çok paranlıştık, bu şu bu şunda bir kriz yüz kilovat kan bu şunda mezgilde kanda kılmaz bu bunu dikenim de kanda bula işla da özel türde fikirleşip paranlıştırdı. Parat yüzümü en sıkıştı başladı, bu da mangoş işla. Um, and as a result of all of these um, uh, ominous changes that were occurring from 2012, um, we all, of course, were worrying, and Perat and I talked about uh, what we should do. Um, he was worried just as I was. Bulup mişkim o 16. yıldırdın kiyin, mişkim 16. yıldırdın kiyin ki yerim bedin kiyin. Asasiyatın mı şu bu katım ki mı şu çok basturuşun ki uygur ziyalıla kartıldalık bulup mu uygur medeniyet tetkikat sahasdikle uygur medeniyet edebiyat sen esasdiklerin asas nişan buldalık enik bab kalde şu mezgilde. Especially from the second half of 2016, it became clear that um, Uyghur intellectuals and Uyghurs in the arts and literature were going to be particular targets um, of this campaign. Uh, in August 2017, uh, you know, with difficulty, um, I moved to the United States, um, and uh, the uh, ever since that time, I uh, lived with great worry about all of my friends back in the Uyghur homeland, um, particularly given what was uh, particularly given the constant arrest of Uyghur intellectuals. Şimdi on yetinçlinin ki ahırlıktan başlayıp bir Türküm dostlarının ki şairlerinin, tercümanlarının, yazıcılarının tutulgalı haberini aldım. Şimdi on on sekizinciyle birinci ayda paratın tutulgalı haberi geldi. From late 2017, um, I heard constant reports of the arrest of Uyghur writers, poets, um, other uh, creative, other um, people in the arts, and um, in January 2018, um, I heard news that Perat had been arrested. Uh, Arlıktan ben mu bu işe katnaştım, katnaşıp bir kısım dostlarımızın yardımı da tutulgan Uyghur ziyalilerinin tizimlikini tuğuzduk, töyt izdim artık. Bunun için de hem de ben tonuydan bilirdiğim Uyghur yazgı şairleri jigirmi de başladı. Around that time, uh, Abdüveli Ayup, myself and others began preparing a list of prominent Uyghur intellectuals who had been detained um and sent to the camps um and uh that list grew to more than 400 people um of the more than 400 Uyghur intellectuals on that list uh those who are uh friends of mine uh number more than 20. Şunundaki mezul paratını haberine ilişkiştirdim. Zade bu kanda tutulgandı, neydi o, neyimi sebepten tutulgandı de ızçıl türde uh, from that time, um, I did everything I could to uh, find any news of Perat um, through any channels possible to see how he was, where he was. Um, I tried. In September 2019, um, somebody in Urumqi who had been in a camp um, was able to relate that they had seen Perat in the camp. Uh, Ardın uzun etmeyi uh, Urumqi'den 
şu bir tonuş dışla arkalık sürüştürüp karatın ki 15 yıl kanak hüküm kalınlık doğruluk kuşcağını aldım. Not long after that, um, as a result of continued questioning, um, I was able to find out that, or I learned that um, Parat had been sentenced to 15 years in prison. Bu haberin algan dikin bak bir aram buldum, ne etti kolum bakti baki yerim buldu. I was deeply distressed and depressed at this news. Ama bu haberin spotlaşka tırştım Parat ninki idarsa telefon kıldım ama idarsa telefonla Ağan hizmetçiler sualımı cevap vermedi. Mandakçı etkan çağda bu sualı cevap verişini red kıldı. Hem de ben para tutmuşumda kandak para tutursun bağ mı? Para tutursun idarlı hizmet uğrunda memes mi de bir hukuk ayda telefon kılgan. Ama onlar red kıldı cevap verişini. After that I did what I could to confirm Uh, this information, I made many calls. I called his office, but the people who answered the phone at his office refused to say anything about Parat. Uh, bir yollarını tepip, Parat'ın ki ayağını bilen, uh, ayağını arkalık sürüştü kılıç kıtırıştın. Uh, then I did my best to uh, find out about Parat's wife um, by, you know, uh, communicating or uh, sort of uh, via other people in Arumchi who, who knew Parat's wife. I, I did what I could to find out what her situation was. Lekin ahırı mağın kengen xəvada Parat'tan ayağılı bilen, onun etrafıdaki Parat'tan ayağılı bilen bile bir yada bir dukaçı dağın ilk sübi suat sarı dukaçı atı ayağılı. Bile dukaçı dağın ayağılı nait yakış ütü dağın lamu hazır Parat'tan ayağılığa yakın kemmeydi ken, ayağılığı gəp kumbaydı ken, yüzünü kaçırıp yürüdü ken bula. Şunu bilen Parat'ın ahvalını ayağlı taraftan sürüştük için imkaniyetim bulmadı. Um, but it became clear that um, even people who had worked with uh, Parat's wife in the same workplace um, were uh, felt cautious, or rather were um, unwilling to approach her that um, they kept their distance from her. And uh, it became clear to me that um, it would not be possible to find out about Parat's situation uh, via his wife either. Yani de müşahvaldın ayet inek hem de Parat'ın tutulgallıkı tüpeyledin onun ki çünkü küçük balısı ayalı kançlık iğir ahvalda kançlık bir kıl yarüleksiz ahvaldı kakaş geldi ki inek azlandı. It is therefore clear I think um, from these inquiries that Uh, just how difficult uh, and painful a situation Parat's wife and his two children have been left in uh, as a result of his disappearance and his blacklisting by the state. And the Parat no tutulishi wa umbashil kisilishi minanche bugenke dunyadiki anjong tragedi ala nobre. For me, um, Parat's arrest and his uh, being sentenced to 15 years in prison um, is one of the greatest uh, tragedies I can think of. Hem de hazır parat 50 yaşında türümü kırıp 15 yıl kisilip türümü de 15 yıl yazsa 65 yaş yaşında türümü de yatırdığı hesapta. If now at age 50 parat uh, begins a prison sentence of 15 years he will be 65 when he is released from prison. Ben de bir talent yazıkçının ki en pişkan ve kıran mezgili hem de kıran bu türümü de zindan duyduğu. If this occurs, um, a talented writer's uh, most mature 
and potentially productive years will instead pass uh, in a prison cell. Uh, I think I'll, I'll say this much for now. Thank you very much. Ahmed Tairka, um, thank you for Josh for translating this emotional. I, I, I, I'm really emotional. Tairka, this is hard. I, I, I must say this is hard to hear and this, this must be really hard to, to, to tell what has happened and who he was and also what he said in the end. Tide Hamut for um, the the disappearance of Hatursun um, is the biggest tragedy of our time, and which is true because he is a truly talented and greatest one of the greatest mind in this in this world. Um, I would like to invite our audiences as well to participate. I know I I saw some of the messages. Some people are saying that this is really great that we're talking about Parhat Tursun. And some people also sharing their encounter, their friendship with Parhat Tursun. And um, also many thanks for everyone who is sharing uh, Parhat Tursun's um, uh, story. Um, I also want our audiences to know that if you have any questions, if you have any uh, any points that you want to clarify, please feel free to ask. Um, we will give another try for this um, video, probably. I will ask our uh, tech person to um, play the video that um, we prepared. It's this performance of Perhatursun's poetry, Qasida uh, Elegy. If I take a little bit of time. Sound is not working. Avaz yok kum katas. Ha avaz çıkma avatı du. Avaz neymiş ki çıkmaydı ben bunu bilemedim ben mi? Okay. Um, probably we should try if the other video on Vimeo is ready, we probably just try that one. Can we do that? Is it is it working?
Koyuştum burun bir talaş baş şunu biz gerek deydi. Teknik cihetin aşını bir sınav baksanız bakıyken. Eğer bu mayın kalsa yanı bir nemi götüp git deyli. Keçüsle. So sorry for this technical problem. Avaz tallaş küçük katakçı deydi. Keçirsile. <gülüyor> And um, Rahmet. Bu popturluğa ahvaldaydı. <gülüyor> Thank you very much. Yes, it happens. Maybe now it's happening. Still no sound. Okay. I hope you have time to be here with us. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Let me just try one last time. I will just try um, another video um, if that works. That would be perfect. Edelson is one of the most famous novelists. Do you have the sound? Language. But a lot of his most interesting work has never been published in his homeland. A combination of censorship by the Chinese state and a relatively conservative Uyghur literary scene for many years made it difficult for Pat to publish his more avant-garde poetry in journals in the Uyghur region. A dozen years ago or so, when I was first reading and translating Pat Edelson's poetry, I asked him why I wasn't able to find more of his avant-garde work in journals, and he explained the situation to me. But he said he had a notebook at home with a lot of the poetry that he'd been unable to publish over the years, and he said he'd bring it next time we met. And the next time we met, he forgot the notebook. And he forgot it the time after that as well, and that repeated a few times. But then he finally remembered to bring it, and he told me he'd found it um, wedged behind a desk in his house uh, where it must have fallen sometime before. It was a dusty old notebook with its pages falling out. Um, I took it home and it was filled with remarkable poetry. Um, one of those poems was Morning Feeling. At the end to your seat. Sorry, definitely this is not working. <laughs> so, um, okay, anyways, um, there's a um, video that we made um, with uh, the real uh, poetry reciting of Perhat Tursun and with the help of a musician um, who's, um, who helped me to work on the audio a sound designing and this video will be um, released on Pan International's next Creative Witnesses program in the um, 8th of February. So you can also see that video in their um, uh, Creative Witnesses program. I, I hope that will their techniques will be better than ours and then that will make it work. So no more video sharing probably. Or if the sound is working for this one. Okay, just to remember his poetry. 
Yüz yıllık uykudan uykuna tonamaydı onlar birbirlerine. Bilmeydi hem ne oldu. Zeherli güzel şarap kızı kuşallık bilen bir çiğretken. Ulay koçalardan ayını kısay şarap kızı kuşallık bilen sen ne? Bilen sen ne? Zeherli güzel şarap kızı kuşallık bilen. Kallılardan yasalgan ayşı münar yaşadı var. Zeherli güzel şarap kızı kuşallık bilen sen ne? Zeherli güzel şarap kızı kuşallık bilen sen ne? Minin tam zeherli bir sözü yaraklar mısın? Dın söyleyen sebep hayatı için münasip etti. Lanzı kayma başlığının rahmetli de ekran bırakın. Lanzı'nın yoklukmasında zeherli bir sözü şarap yürüyen kuşalım. Bazarda ikiz kumaklıklar, karbe eleşmeş, neşer yoksan zarar, neşer yoksan çıkmayın bir şey. Çırayı kazakta sözü, zeherli bir sözü şarap. Gülü sebebini bilmez, yalnız para bazı sözünün olduğunda. Thank you. Zeherli isim şarap kılıp kuşallıklaştan tek yollakını sınaş bütün ve kesken Zeherli isim şarap kılıp kuşallıklaştan bütün ve kesken Zeherli isim şarap kılıp kuşallıklaştan tek yollakını sınaş bütün ve kesken Zeherli isim şarap kılıp kuşallıklaştan tek yollakını sınaş bütün ve kesken Zeherli isim şarap kılıp kuşallıklaştan tek yollakını sınaş bütün ve kesken Zeherli isim şarap kızı kuşallık bilen Kılıçtan kitlik yollakın sınav Bilen sen ne? Bilen sen ne? Kılıçtan kitlik yollakın sınav Kılıçtan kitlik yollakın sınav Bilen sen ne? Bilen sen ne? Took our clothes. Passed by there even now when you will see our naked corpses. When they force me to accept the massacre as love. Do you know that I am with you? After 300 years they awaken and do not know each other. Their own greatness long forgotten. I have like drank down poison, thinking it find mine. But they search the streets and cannot find my banished figure. Do you know that I am with you in that tower built of skulls? You'll find my skull as well. They cut my head off just to test the sharpness of the sword. But before the sword, our beloved cause and effect relationship is rooted like a wild lover. Do you know that I am with you? When in the market, men with tall fur hats are used for target practice, and a man's face draws out in agony as a bullet cleaves his brain, and before the eyes that look to find the reason of their death, the executioner fades and disappears. Reflected in that bullet, pierced brains, fevered thoughts will be my form. Just then. Do you know that I am with you? In those times when drinking wine is a greater crime than drinking blood? Do you know the taste of the flower ground in the blood turned milk? The wine that Ali Shir Narbahi deliriously drained took its flavor from my blood. In that endlessly mystical drunkenness is farthest, deepest chambers. Do you know that I am with you? Your heart are soon. One of the most important living writers in the Weaver language. 
detained January 2018. <laughs> Ahmed, thank you very much for your patience and thank you very much for watching this very painful performance. Um, it was also emotionally really challenging for me. And you can also um, see, uh, watch again this this video on on YouTube. You can find it under the name of um, "I Can't Sleep" um, uh, exhibition from Lisa Ross. Um, so I would like to invite um, Muyasser to share with us uh, her story and her um, encounter with Perhat Tursun. Muyasser, sizge ketti. Hi, Makadis. Hi. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. I'm honored to share my friendship with Parhat Tursun here. I first met him in Urumqi in August 2006 when I was working as a part-time journalist for an Uyghur farm. Um, that was around when his works were receiving critics and became a hot topic. Some people supported him and his works while others expressed strong disagreements. I never commented on any of them. But I said to our team that I didn't like him because he became a source of unnecessary disputes. So the team arranged me to interview with him. To my surprise, I met a totally different person than I expected. Um, he was humble and quiet. I asked about his work, um, the, the Art of Suicide, which was the main target of the critics at the time. Uh, he said that it was written when he was around 18 so it wasn't even worth criticizing. After he started his PhD in Central University of Nationalities, he also worked as a lecturer. I was studying in Beijing University then, so I visited him time to time and we talked about our common interest, uh, that was psychology. He also allowed me to join some of his lessons. I remember he taught wholeheartedly and in a very humorous way. Uh, I consider him one of my mentors whom I had the chance to know in those years. I recently talked to his students to know more about him. And one of them, Zuhra Abdulwahid, told me specifically about him as a teacher. According to her, he made their college year more meaningful than ever. He didn't teach them what was on the textbook, rather taught them other things that he believed more valuable. Um, they first uh, heard about psychology and literature from him learned more about what they could never learn from other sources. For example, completely new and the different meanings in the fairy tales they had been reading since their childhood. Um, nobody in the class wanted to miss his classes. Classmates even thought of writing his thesis on Parhat Tursun's trend of writing. Um, they all remember him with respect and admiration. At the end of the semester, he asked them to write an essay and as an exam and tell them what score they wanted to get. So they all finished that semester with high scores and improved themselves in important polls. Uh, the other point I want to add is that he was a real book addict who loved reading most advanced academic books in English. He bought the books which were not easy to find there, to read, not to display. Um, I believe he doesn't feel lonely um, in prison now. What he has learned can never be erased. They can give him strength as well as hope to survive. So now I would like to read a poem which I dedicated to him. I appreciate Dr. Uh, I appreciate for Dr. Joshua Freeman translating it today. Uh, he will read the translation after the original version. Turmigahat. Perhat Tursunga. Seni ilk getgen kiti yaki kündüzünün aldıraş kadem lirde. 
Mən bəlkim senin sınıfındaki bir burcaki kətgən idim. Yandın tanışığı ki bulup aşı iki üç saat senin çonkurluklarına, senin məzgilsiz koruklarına, senin hayatın kaçan, hayatın yoruklarına, birdemlik nur çüken hiyallarımda yetken idim. Seni yalğız digerler bar idi. Sen yalğız emez idin. Yalğız kalmaysan, açlık öldürülmeydiğen kitapların bar içinde. Usuzluk çankıtalmaydıgan fikirlerin yar içinde. Tayaklar ağırtalmaydıgan hakikat sorar içinde. Yalğızlık degen kandak buludu. Közlerin tekli makanda tarım otoludu. Sen seher turuşka adetlengen çokum. Nemi keri ki tan yorumay uyğut işlerinin? Sen sual soraklığa adetlengen burundun? Nemi keri ki fut kollarını çüşek ayetten soğutışkı uğrun işlerinin? Sen soğumaysan, senden yüz öğregen ayetten mi? Seni zımıstanda digerler bilip kaladu, senin her zaman bir baharda yaşığının mi? Senin vatının mi? Bahar bilen açlığının mı? Reşat kılardın, sen karımaysan bizge, biz han tan bolumuz ruhinin erkin kanat deyişlerine karab. Yazgallarını biz okumayımız, onlar bizge bizne okup beridu, onlar bizge sendin birine tokup beridu. Thank you all. Thank you, Masad. Um, so, this is, uh, I just prepared this translation this morning, and I don't know if it does the poem justice yet, but um, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing work. Um, so, a letter to the prison. Muyasar Abduhat Khandan. For Perator Sun. In the busy footsteps of the night or day, they took you. Perhaps I ran to the corner of your classroom to listen quietly for a couple hours. And when my thoughts shone for a moment, I saw your depths, your face wrinkled too early, and the light from your life that was refuge from life. Some said you were alone, but you were never lonely. Loneliness is not for you. Within you are books no hunger can extinguish. For friends, you have thoughts no thirst can dry out. Within you speaks a justice that no blow can injure. What would loneliness be? Your desert eyes fill with a river totem. You always got up early. Why do they now wake you before dawn? You've always known hard questions. Why do they now bind your limbs and stamp out your fire? In life's harshest hour, you will never grow cold. Those who see you in winter will learn that for you, spring is every day, that you heal the homeland with the spring. You do not look to us through iron bars. It is we who look to you for freedom. We do not read the books you wrote. They read us to ourselves. They bring you to our eyes. It's, it's really a powerful poem. Thank you for sharing this, this poem and thank you for doing, like in this really short amount of time, the translation. And thank you very much. There have been a lot of very thankful messages in the um, from the, our audiences, and they're thanking both of you. And they're also um, really enjoyed the the poetry that Mesa wrote. Um, so I still want to invite everyone. It's great that we are all remembering Per Hattersson. It's really an important date and please don't forget 
that we need to raise awareness about his case and also the other intellectuals, anyone who's suffering in these camps. And we need to let people know that these people who Chinese government put into camps are also vibrant people and their, their, their messages and their work is really important for human humanity, human culture, and all of us, like everyone should know about Perhat Tursun's work. Um, I would like to invite our last panelist, Darren, please take place. And we would like to know about your work and your relationship to Perhat Tursun. Thank you. Sure, it's an honor to be here. What a, a moving um, past hour. Uh, I I came to Arumchi in 2014 uh, for a, a, a year of field work uh, to really study migration to the city of Arumchi, which is the capital of the, of the Uyghur region. Um, and I was interested in you know what kind of life migrants find in the city, um, how are they treated by by government authorities? How does it break down by ethnic lines, and what effect does it have on their social life? Um, and so, as I, as I was starting to explore those questions, starting to meet people, um, I had the good fortune of of, of uh, talking to one of our mutual friends, both of Josh and Tyr Akas, um, about my research, and he pointed me towards one of Perhat's books, um, uh, a novel that that wasn't even fully written yet um, and was only semi-published. It was called The Big City or Chong Shehead. Um, and it's written as a series of novellas. The first novella had already been published online, um, but as I found out later, was still in processes of revision. Because one of the things that Perhat does is he kind of writes over decades um, and he's always thinking with his work and revising it um, as he can. Um, so I started reading that book and it just sort of opened up a whole world to me um, that would have been difficult to gain access to without it as sort of a guide as to, you know, what does alienation feel like if you're a weak or young person coming to this a city that's, that's Han majority um, where the institutions are really set up in opposition to you. Um, and as I started exploring the book and, and I began, began translating it with a friend. We started to meet regularly and read it together and translate it together. Um, it began to, to show me things that I hadn't anticipated. Um, it turned out that the book is sort of semi-biographical, autobiographical. Um, it, it starts or it goes from Kashgar to Beijing and then to Arumchi, which is this sort of life path that um, that, that Perhat took, uh, although he started not in Kashgar, but Atush. Um, and it, there's a, a, a discussion of, of disorientation as they come to the city of Arumchi, of being kind of turned around. Um, as as the, the protagonist in the novella talks about, um, you know, when he was growing up, the mountains were to the north, and now they're to the east and the west. Um, and the, the city planning is on a grid, um, and so it's not clear, like, you know, which direction is Mecca. Uh, all of these things are, are turning him around. Um, and he's making sense of it. And as I talked to other people, migrants to the city, they said, yeah, that's how we feel. That's, this, is, this is our experience. Um, the thing that he repeats over and over in this novella, the, the protagonist is, no one recognizes me in the city, so it's impossible for me to be friends or enemies with anyone. Um, and when I talked to Parhat about it later, he said, that's because it, it, saying this gives him a sense of protection, a sense of security, that he's anonymous in the city um, and that no one can, can, can harm him because they don't know him. Um, over time though, they do get, they get to know him and they, they push him out. Um, that's, that's the trajectory of the novella. The thing that shows up over and over again in the novella is the way that his boss in his workplace smiles at him all the time while he um, is, is you know, secretly trying to push him to the side, try to push him out. Um, it's clear that this boss is Han. Um, his, his coworkers are condescending to him constantly. Um, and that's articulated in a whole bunch of different scenes. Um, and over the course of the novella, the violence that he's coming from in the countryside and the violence he's moving towards in the city um, are slowly revealed. So there's a kind of suspense that's built into the novella. Um, one of the things he talks about over and over again is that in the city, there, he has no place. 
that all he's been given is a drawer in a desk. Um, he doesn't even have uh, an apartment or any other space where he could actually lay himself down. Um, he's also finding that his sense of smell is increasing um, over time throughout the novella. Um, and he's being sort of treated as though he's subhuman or, or non-human um, by his coworkers. Um, and over time, you start to think that, oh, he's actually literally becoming a rat. That's how he starts to think about himself as being um, less than less than human in some ways. So thinking with that novella was really important for me as I was doing my work uh, because it, it helped me think about what dehumanization actually feels like, what institutionalized violence feels like. Um, but it also helped me think about the beautiful moments of in rural Uyghur life and how that comes into the city, um, how people sing as they work, um, how they measure time, how they have particular techniques of the body that they carry with them and that refuses to be erased. Um, as I talked to migrants about the story, sometimes they had read it, most of the times they hadn't, so I'd sort of just tell them parts of the story. Um, what I found was that this novella actually stages something that everyone was holding in common, um, something that, that made sense to them and was really the first time that they were seeing their own lives being represented on a public stage. Um, at the same time, it, it also was showing something different to them because this person that's coming to the city is all alone. And they said, we're never alone. We always have our friends. We always have our family. And without them, we would feel all alone. Um, and that's the main difference between us and the protagonist of this person in the city. When I think about the, the novella, which is now under contract at Columbia University Press and will be coming out next year, or well, maybe later this year, but probably next year, um, it, it reminds me a lot of, of work that's coming out of apartheid South Africa or um, you know, Jim Crow US, um, the work of like J.M. Kotsea, The Life and Times of Michael Kay, or The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Um, and I'm very excited to, to have this, this, this novella brought to a broader audience because I think what, what Parhat's work does is it, is it is engaging world literature, it's engaging modernist thinking, you know, I had so many conversations with Parhat about, you know, Lacan, <laughs> about psychoanalytic theory, about how he learned Chinese so he could read Schopenhauer. Um, he's a really lucid thinker, um, and that really leaps to the front in the page. Um, at the same time, he's a masterful storyteller, and you can tell that he has the skill of a poet because he's writing these little images, you know, right at the level of the sentence. Um, and so, it's imperative that his work be brought to the public um, and to broader audiences. And you know, most of his work, you know, is still kind of in, in various stage of, of being unpublished. So there's lots of work to be done. I last contacted him um, in the summer of 2017. Well, he contacted me on Facebook um, and he was asking me about um, translating his second novella. He was kind of impatient about it and thought I should work on it right away. Um, he thought he had a VPN that wouldn't be detected. So he said it was safe. I told him, I don't think it was. Um, and then we found out later, you know, it really probably wasn't safe. He, he disappeared. Um, it's very hard to think about the life that he's experiencing now. Um, he's such a, a joyous um, person who, who sees beauty, who sees humor in the absurd. Um, I'm sure he's finding ways to survive. But like all of us have said, this is, is an immense tragedy. And it's something that all of us should protest and all of us should engage. Um, like they were saying in that video, you know, he's with us and, and we need to understand that he's still with us everywhere we go. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm Personally, thank you very much for doing this this job to make his novella available for everyone. And I, as as we are saying from this the beginning of this um, event, that his work should be known, read by more people. And um, I really like the image of lu lucid thinker and um, joyful person who sees beauty in in everything, in like in the absurd situations. I'm I mean that's 
I hope he he uses that skill to to survive this really tragic time. Um, I'm not seeing anyone asking any questions from our audiences, but um, I will invite you to do that. But I will also invite everyone in this panel to join back in to the conversation and um, to share some thoughts. And if you have any um, questions to each other, and um, yeah, I would like to invite you back and please unmute yourself and then ask questions. I, I also have um, some questions. Probably I will start just the first question. Um, so uh, um, from Josh, um, so the, the process of translating his poetry and it's really like, his poetry is hard to understand and at, at the same time how is what is your process to translate his poetry and make it really um understandable and um re really like emotional for everyone um well i can only hope that i've achieved that um but uh like i said i started translating his poetry around 2007 maybe even 2006 um and uh i i think the first the first is poems I published, as I mentioned, were um, Elegy and Morning Feeling. Um, and in 2018, after I heard news that he had been arrested, I kept thinking about Elegy, um, which everybody just heard um, Lisa Ross reading my translation of um, in, the, in the video we just watched. And that poem just speaks so powerfully uh, to the injustice and tragedy of history and also of the individual uh, nonetheless surviving within it. So I just kept thinking of that poem. I went back and looked at the translation that I published in 2011 and I was totally unsatisfied with it. So I, I did a new translation. Um, so it's, it's constantly, um, you know, an effort to uh, come up with translations that are more faithful to the original, that are more, that get across more of the emotion and the meaning of the original. Um, which is, of course, not the same thing as, or not identical to word to word, line to line faithfulness. Um, I think actually, you know, for for Padot's poetry, back when I was, you know, tr living in a room sheet and translating it, if you know, what I would do is I would I would do my translation, and then if I had any questions about what Padot meant by a given line or something, I would call him up, or we'd meet up and we'd talk about it, and. You know, sometimes we would spend an hour or two hours talking about one of his poems. And I felt then, and I feel now, just so incredibly grateful for that time that I spent with him talking about that. Um, not just because I have no way to talk with him now, um, though that's part of it, but also even then I felt a lot of gratitude because um, his is such an exceptional mind and such an exceptional imagination um that to talk through this work with its author and talk about what he was thinking as he wrote it and so on is such a was such a special experience um you know his poetry is pretty postmodern, you could say for the most part um and uh sometimes actually um the uh newness of his work in uyghur can be the hardest part to convey in english because some things that are almost a bit shocking, you know, you know, in Uyghur poetry or were when Padot was first publishing them are not that shocking in English language poetry. Um, so sometimes, you, you know, I can try to strike a balance there. Um, but uh, the other thing is that uh, Padot is perfectly happy to let a sentence go on for many lines. Um, and uh, that totally works in Uyghur because of the way verbs are structured and things like that. In English, it can be a real challenge. Um, so, but it's it's a it's a a fulfilling challenge. Um, you know, when you when you translate somebody's poem, you feel like you've kind of been um, communing with their mind, um, and uh, that's why it's always such a such a privilege to translate poetry. So I don't know if I successfully answered your question, but that's what comes to mind. Yeah, it's it's really nice to have no like your process processing of translating his poetry is also communicating 
with him and discussing his poetry with him. That's really important. Um, some people are asking questions and this is a very important one, I think. And I think everyone in this panel is asking themselves this question. Um, the question is, apart from raising awareness and talking about Perhat Tursun on social media, what else we can do? And what else we can do? Do you want to share any thoughts on that? Can Josh translate that um, to Tahir Hamut? Um, um, apart from raising awareness on social media and hoping for like his release, what else we can do? Okay. İstimai tarat kula ya ki başka yerlerde bu gaplarla kılıştın başka bu uyguların işlerine nispeten uyguların davasına nispeten ve tanıdık olan işlerine nispeten biz nimlerine kubbe alayımız çünkü elbette istimai tarat kula da gaplarlarımız lakin onu başka kandak işler var kandak bir teklifler var tayyip onu kadar fikir versiniz. Bu fikir hem eğlence. Hem eğlence. Hem başta sözünün kahalama. Hem ama. Aldı ile mekskçe cevap vereyim. Hem de bizden ki azlık vaxta çetelindeki uyğurların, şundakla çetelindeki dostlarımızdan ki, ya ki uyğurların ahvalı kümül bildiğilerinin, türmedeki ya ki lagirdeki uyğurların kutkuz cevapta kılıdığa işleri bək köp emeliyyatda. Uh, Sorry. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of things that those of us outside of China can do uh, in regard to the situation in the Uyghur homeland and for uh, the countless Uyghurs who are currently imprisoned in uh, camps and uh, prisons and labor facilities. Uh, Lagırlarda yetiştirme bu açıkça, yani biz bunu önümün kürüşçün, bulağ boğan, çünkü hükümeti ki boğan besimle aşırış ve bulağ kolumuzun kilitçe bulağ yardım kılışçın, biz köprüler şu teşvikat ne, muşna sosyal medyalarda gap kılış nasıl kılıvatımız? But because the situation is so extreme, um, in order to increase pressure on the Chinese party state um, to change the situation there. Uh, we are currently expending a lot of effort to try to boost the signal uh, in all kinds of media, including social media. Uh, uh, of course, translating work by um, Uyghur authors, and particularly by Uyghur authors in the camps and prisons, uh, is going to be a very important part of this. Um, but it is something that gives fruit over a longer period. It's a, it's kind of a long-term effort. And there are other things that are not going to Uyghurlar kömür bildiğin, muşunda azır dünyadaki en çok tragediyelerin bir olan Uyghur muşu azremde irki kırgancılık yiyen geplim buluyordu. Muşunda bir ahvalga kömür bildiğin barlık dostlarının hemde yüzden kuldun kaçlık iş kese, mail sosyal medya aldı bolsun, mail başka şekilde bolsun, muşunda yardım kılışını, kömür bilişini, hiç bom kaçlıkta dikkat kılışını ümit kılımana. Um, given, uh, of course, each one of us um, has different circumstances and different opportunities for engaging on this. Um, but uh, at the very least, uh, we would ask that everybody pay attention to and do what they can uh, in regard to one of the uh, most serious um, catastrophes in the world today, a uh, situation which is now widely being referred to as a genocide. Thank you. Do any any of you want to say anything in addition to Tahiram's ideas?
I mean, sure, I can add a few things. Um, it's very hard to know how we can intervene in Perhat's case in particular. I mean, we can petition, we can write to the Chinese government, and um, and I think if we you know bring his work to the fore, that will also uh, have some effect in bringing him into the mainstream in, in different ways. Um, and so more institutional funding for Uyghur cultural production, cultural translation is really important. Um, and so that's something that a lot of people could contribute to, I, I think. Um, really just uplifting the voices of Uyghurs um, who are in diaspora and who can really speak with authority to, to what's going on on the ground and really, and also begin to, to communicate the, the deep history of Uyghur culture, uh, Uyghur knowledge systems. Um, so that's, you know, more events like this, I think would be great too. Um, but it's, you know, everyone's stretched really thin. And so more and more support from people sort of at the margins of the community or you know, people that are just starting to, to, to become aware of what's going on would be really useful. Then there's of course broader campaigns that people can get involved with. Um, there's you know labor rights campaigns that would begin to push back against forced labor, uh, which is part of the system in Northwest China. Um, there's uh, government level things that can be done. Um, you know boycotting the Olympics is something that would send a signal to people back in China as to how serious the situation really is and is being read because I think there's still a, an information gap among many people in China as to what's actually happening, what their government is doing in their name. Um, so so there's, there's that kind of work that can be done. Josh, do you want to add something? Um, well, I think Tayaka and Darren have um, put it all very eloquently. I guess I would just add that there are uh, human rights organizations uh, very actively working on this issue. Um, you can always donate to them. Um, the Uyghur Human Rights Project in particular is a Uyghur-led organization, um, which is uh, playing a leading role in all of this. Um, there is uh, shait.biz, uh, it's a website. Um, I think it's just S H A H I T dot B I Z, if I remember correctly, um, which is um, it is devoted to um, uh, collecting information on as many people who have been sent to the camps and prisons as possible, and making that publicly available and documenting the crisis, individual by individual. Um, they are constantly in need of help, not just monetary, but they also need volunteers to help with data entry, translation, and so on. So there are organizations out there that you can get involved with if you don't know where to start. Rahmat, thank you very much. And um, uh, uh, one of our audience is saying that Darren raised a very important point. It's really important for wider world to understand what is happening, who are the Uyghurs, and to, um, to especially the, the, the situation of imprisonment of people such as Perhat Tursun. It is a really important point. Thank you very much. Um, there is another question um, for Tairaka. I think he read the question. It was uh, asked in, in Uyghur. So, can Josh or Darren wants to give it a translation or do you want me to do it? I can translate it. Um, okay. Should I read it in Uyghur first? Or? Yes, do that for the pleasure for, for Uyghurs to read, like listen to your Uyghur. Oh, um, I don't know how much pleasure that's going to be, but Mentai can be so so much. Since Peratosun Uyghur at Beatra Kais Chat and Tepochte. Peratusunga Kartlawan Tankit, Bolopmo, Yalkurosni Tankit, Bunra Kadak Taskusette. So, um, Taika, I have a question for you. In your opinion, um, what um, contributions has Peratusun made to Uyghur literature? Um, and uh, the criticism directed at him, particularly uh, Yalkurosi's criticism, um, what effect have, has that had? Paratusuninki Uyuradibato de Ki Urne Nike Uzgicha. Paratusun has a, a unique, thoroughly unique place in Uyghur literature. 
Çünkü Parat özünün əsərlər arqılıq Uyğur ədibiyyatının ki ən ənəvi asas teyimiz türkəyəgən bəzi istetik köz qıraşlarına ağdığan. Because in his works Parat has deliberately overturned uh, many traditional themes and views in traditional Uyghur literature. And the other part of the essay is the concrete message and the concrete message is the same. So, the uh, uh, other so, this is not the place. This is not the place for us to get into um, a detailed discussion of the various criticisms of Parat's work. Paratniki Uyghur adibiyatı da muhim orunda turdugallıqı və özünün əsərlərinin ki özgüç qimmət ikəllikini Uyghur adibiyatı qızıqdığan, Uyghur adibiyatı diqqət qılğan hər qanda adam his qılalaydı. Um the importance of Parat's work and its place in Uyghur literature um will be clear to any to any Uyghur reader who uh reads the works themselves that's Əmdə Yalqor özünün ki, tənqiqi kəsək, bu əmdə ilqə səhəl bir qədər ədibirək bir məsələ. Bu məsələni başqa bir tiyim sübdə də ayrım deyişidən bir nəsə, həm onun üstəgə parat dursun bilə Yalqor öz otdursdə ki, bu münazirə ədibiyyat dairəsindən səhəl alqıq gətkən tərəfə var. Şuna bunu biyədə yeah, so um, the debate or argument or fight between Peratos and Yalkorozi is uh, a fairly specialized uh, literary topic. Uh, in fact, it's um, a debate which was somewhat beyond literature, it was not just about literature. Um, so it is, is worthy of uh, separate discussion in its own right. Şun həmdə bu cəhətdə qızıqlıq Allah olsa, Paratının əsəllərəgə, alaydıqəgə, Paratının nəyim üçün uyğur ədibiyyatı dışında münazir qozqaydıqan bir icadiyyətçi boğınıqa qızıqlıq Allah olsa, biz ayrım paranlaşsaq, ayrım söhbətləsək buldu. So, if there are people who want to discuss more on Parat's role in Uyghur literature and why it is that his works um, inspired such heated debate um i would be happy to discuss that further in a different forum dedicated to that topic Rahmet. thanks thank you very much Rahmet. um for those who doesn't really know um the other uh, intellectual that we're talking about yalqun rozi and he's also a very important figure um for our culture um so if you want to know more, please, uh, we can provide some uh, some information and you can also uh, learn about his work and his contribution to Uyghur culture and Uyghur literature. Um, yeah. Can I just add something real quick about Yalkun? That it's important to know that Yalkun has also been put in prison um, and you know he will be around the same age as, as Parhat when he's released, I think, uh, you know, uh, per the sentence that he was given. Um, so both writers have been treated, you know, very unfairly, neither deserving the sentences that they've been given. Um, we have very little information about his case also. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have been talking about um, Parhat Tursun for over the one hour and a half. Um, and um, I'm sure that we have like still hours of discussion about his work, his personality and um, his um, place in the world and um, him as a thinker, as a friend, as a teacher. Uh, but I hope we can do this again. I hope we can have more in, in detailed, in, in depth conversation about his work. So that's something that we can organize. And um, also I invite everyone to start reading his poetry from the translation of uh, Josh. And then when the, the book translation, the novella is published, you can hopefully also read the translation from Darren. Um, thank you very much. I don't know if the panelist wants to add anything to conclude. 
I would just uh, thank people for, thank everyone for coming and watching. And uh, once again, just encourage you to add your voice in any way you can um, to bring more, to raise awareness on this issue, um, Per Atursun's internment and the broader catastrophe in the Uyghur region. Mamma, I began to push Pali to Mazia, no Anglan, Kurgan, Urlan, and Kazakhwal, Kumblot, and Barl Tostava, Captain Katashakurim Nateman. Am Domluk, Lanke, Amush Akhwalati Katkotoshine, a cold in Kilisha, was no cold in Kuma. I would also like to thank everybody who watched and listened to um, this event today and everybody who is um, paying attention to and engaged on uh, the crisis in the Uyghur region. I hope that everybody remains uh, attentive and engaged on this issue. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, thank you everyone for listening. This means that you are interested in Uyghur issue and that means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you all for coming uh, and for engaging with this. Um, you know, Parhat Tursun is a one of a kind person a unique individual in the world. Um, you know, getting to know him was uh, one of the, the most momentous, you know, periods of my life and has shaped me as it shaped Josh. Um, so thinking about where he's at now and about how much his, his voice needs to be heard um, is really what's motivating me to do a lot of the work that I'm doing. Um, and I really hope that that those of you that are listening can um, engage his work um, and, and and and involve yourself in the situation that is confronting the Uyghurs. Um, so thanks again for coming. Um, thank you also for all the panelists. They have been we have been receiving a lot of messages from our audiences, thanking everyone and wishing that we can organize more discussion around Perhat's work. So hopefully we can have another sessions or more sessions to have like uh, detailed discussions about him and i also want to thank everyone and also i want to mention that there will be another event in the 8th of february organized by pan international creative witnesses so i will share them their youtube account with you so you can have a look on the 8th of um february um, they are also um, uh, raising awareness about Perhat Tursun and they're also uh, releasing a video that we made with Josh and a sound uh, engineer, which uh, his name is Asher. So we did a video uh, using one of his poetry, um, The Morning Feelings. The Morning Feeling. Um, so thank you very much. And um, hopefully you can keep talking about Parhat, not only Parhat, but also everyone who's suffering in this inhumane conditions. And um, please be aware and also please join and read his poetry. His poetry is really beautiful and really profound. And also really, yeah, come back again to discuss with us um, his poetry, his work. Thank you for everyone. <laughs>